What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're talking about Chucky Season 3. In this video here today we'll also be talking about The Nun 2. We'll be talking about the future of the Insidious franchise and the Insidious growing universe, cinematic universe we could be having coming our way. And then we'll be talking about Terrifier 3 which officially was announced today and it will arrive sometime next year. Now Chucky Season 3 is likely going to be taking place in New York which isn't too shocking since Season 2 ends with Tiffany and Caroline on the run with Nika being shown watching Tiffany and then a Chucky doll is revealed to still be out there and alive inside of the Bell doll that we thought was lifeless. This assumption is coming from the set footage that's been circulating online. Forever Young, which is the working title for Chucky Season 3, is currently filming out in Canada. And the set footage people have managed to capture in the area highlights a big downtown city vibe. Uh, this is the, this is most likely going to be one of the major locations for the season. So the question I have is how will Lexi, Devin, and Jake get involved? What will bring them to New York, if at all? Or is this season going to be mostly focused on the character of Tiffany? Because Chucky season three might also be going to prison in some capacity. Uh, the working title again is called Forever Young for Chucky season three. And apparently... They will have some scenes shot at Kingston Penitentiary. The details from the casting call state that selected performers will be playing the part of inmates at a women's prison. And as a result, this casting call is for women presenting participants only. So I would assume this is either going to be Tiffany or Nika going to prison. My bet is Tiffany confessing to some type of crime just to get away from Chucky, who hopefully breaks in and gives us an iconic prison sequence of absolute bloody mayhem. It would also appear that this is going to be a prison centric episode. So I'm very excited about this. This episode is supposed to shoot sometime in June. I think this listed around like June 6th and 7th and 8th. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description to the casting call for this or the details about said casting call because it describes it as though it's going to be a centric episode taking place in prison. My bet is it's going to be Tiffany who confesses to something just to get away from Chucky and Chucky will make his way into the prison and we'll get a very iconic sequence with Chucky killing several inmates within said prison trying to get his way to Tiffany. Now, jumping into The Nun 2, we got our first look at The Nun 2, but I think these are actually HD leaks. So to protect my channel and to protect it from being flagged for any reason, I'm not going to show these images here. If you want to see them, you can go on Twitter and type in The Nun 2. I'm sure you'll find something pop up. However, the Alberta trailer rating system did list the upcoming teaser trailer that's coming as one minute and 24 seconds so that means it's coming very soon because we know once stuff starts popping up on there that means the trailer teaser is ready and it's going to release very soon we know tights of armiga will be back as sister irene so we got a good look at her in some of these images and she's going to be traveling to a school called saint mary's i believe where frenchie is still possessed by valak and befriends a girl named sophie and of course demonic chaos will ensue sister irene will show up and try to assist now one of these images that leaked did confirm a bit about the trailer i was told back in april because there's an image of a group of girls and one has their head grabbed by a pair of hands i just found that to be interesting because it matched the description of the trailer that i was told back in april so i'm very excited to see this trailer when it drops knowing some of the bits about what goes on in the trailer it should be very entertaining jumping into terrifier 3 terrifier 3 is coming next year and filming will begin later this year david howard thornton and lauren lavera are expected to return so art and sienna will be battling once again it would seem damian leone will direct and this was his statement from the official announcement that came from Deadline earlier today. He said, Terrifier 3 will be another boundary-pushing addition to the horror genre, continuing the no-holds-barred, uncompromising exploit exploits fans of the franchise have come to expect and celebrate. The budget is also substantially bigger compared to the increase we saw with Terrifier 2, according to this report. This is being done to give the filmmakers more creative freedom, as expected. Terrifier 2 was a great success, honestly, when considering its budget, so I can't wait to see the presentation we get with 3. No other official casting news has happened, but we'll learn more soon because filming should start around November or December of this year, according to the report that came out related to Terrifier 3. Now, the Lamberts talking about the future of the Insidious franchise. Insidious 5 is going to be closing the door on the Lamberts. It's being billed as the final chapter in their story. However, this is coming from the V Scooper. The future of the Insidious franchise could be us getting what they tried to do with those two Elise prequels. 
them once again trying to give us a cinematic universe similar how the conjuring was able to successfully launch a cinematic universe that's not to say that all of the conjuring spin-offs are good movies but they were able to successfully launch a universe that was basically dropping a movie a year at one point in the 2010s now the v scooper is saying that the lamberts from the first movie are not the only family that will face the further in this saga besides the spin-off thread about a family whose daughter died and they'll use the further to get her back now, again, keep in mind, I did a video talking about this. We know Mandy Moore is going to be starring in this. It's basically Insidious 6, but it's a spinoff that has nothing to do with the Lamberts. Uh, but aside from that, there are other families and people who will need help from the further. The future of Insidious is about the legacy of Elise's knowledge and teachings. She has been teaching about the further and others have the same abilities as her. That's the setup for the future. He also went on. To, they also went on to say to take this with a grain of salt. They heard that they have written multiple chapters, at least three more. The next one is in pre-production, so expect an Insidious Cinematic Universe. Now, that next one that's in pre-production, that again is the Mandy Moore one that's upcoming, Thread and Insidious Tale. Now, do we have an Insidious 6, 7, and 8 ready to go as far as a script is concerned? And, of course, if 5 is a success, we could be, according to the V-Scooper, we only not could be getting just Insidious 6. You could be getting a 7, 8, possibly many more, depending on how far they want to expand this bigger story. Because this goes along with the other scoop that they were putting out a few weeks ago or a few days ago, talking about there's bigger plans that are being set up with the events of Insidious 5. So we'll see how this all rounds out and ends up playing out with the Insidious Cinematic Universe, it's, if it is able to get off the ground successfully with Insidious 5. But I'm going to conclude this portion of my video talking about horror updates here, and now I'm going to talk about The Boogeyman. I'm going to give a review on The Boogeyman. Okay, so as mentioned, this is going to now be the portion of the video where we go into a spoiler-free review for The Boogeyman. The Boogeyman is directed by Rob Savage. It is written by Scott Beck, Brian Woods, and Mark Heyman. It is off it is of course based off of the boogeyman by stephen king it is starring sophie thatcher chris messina uh vivian blair and david das macklin malkin might be mispronouncing that so the premise of this is high school student sadie harper and her little sister sawyer are still reeling from the recent death of their mother devastated by his own pain their father will a therapist by profession gives them neither the support nor the affection that they try to claim from him when a desperate patient shows up shows up unexpectedly at their house asking for help they bring in a terrifying entity that preys on the family and feeds on their greatest suffering now i would say that the boogeyman is a redemption in a lot of ways for rob savage as far as i'm concerned because after host i don't know what the fuck dash cam was <laughs> this was far superior than anything in dash cam a mostly generic adaptation of stephen king's original short story that still features enough frightening sequences to make it worth checking out at least once if you are a diehard horror fan, you've seen movies like this before. So in a lot of ways, the Boogeyman's biggest flaw is it doesn't stand out and just coast on being able to successfully retread familiar horror territory without having a lot to make it worth revisiting. But I still will because I like the overall execution and had a good time with it for the most part. The Boogeyman begins with one of the most gruesome opening sequence sequences I've seen this year. And then it just becomes another run of the mill, but effective, effect, effective enough horror film. Now, our three characters characters sadie will and sawyer sadie played by sophia thatcher will played by chris messina and sawyer played by vivian blair are all likable and easy to relate to even though this kind of setup with a recently deceased family member and everyone finding ways to cope has been done so much in the past still this kind of subject matter always goes over well when executed correctly and the boogeyman passes this with flying colors the story allows us to become invested in the family dynamics which helps me give a damn if they live or die and i'm sure sure to help a lot of you when you see this movie and it also helps when everyone involved is delivering a solid performance in their roles some humor is present in the story too but not much was funny to me but i was able to get a kick out of a jungle book reference and a not so intentionally funny moment when this girl from sadie's school gets slapped in the face because she had it coming when you see it you'll know what i'm talking about as far as far as like the way the creature is handled design wise it's pretty cool but not like the most overly original creature design and the lack of exposition dumping from the story about what it is and how it or how it operates kept things intense even when the monster was starting to be shown way too much i hate well don't hate when movies you know what i'm talking about when movies start telling you way too much about how the monster operates and what it is where it's coming from it's no longer as effective as it was prior to that because it's kind of depleting 
that mysterious nature of what was making it so scary to begin with. So when you start shipping away at it, it's no longer effective. Jeepers Creepers is a victim of this. For those of my, for those Jeepers Creepers of Jeepers Creepers fans that watch my videos out there watching this. Now, the things about grief, imagination versus reality, paying attention to your kids are all handled decently enough, but could have been better as there are countless times where I could say that this is explored way more profoundly in the short story itself. Will's inability to accept what his daughters are insisting is occurring and obviously them trying to get attention from him is like the biggest way the film explores that child neglect theme, but it doesn't go as far as I would have liked it to, but that's due to how short and simple this film keeps it. The scares are mostly coming in the form of jump scares, some which are so quick you won't be able to predict them, but there's also this eerie atmosphere present throughout the film that just keeps you on the edge. So great use of lighting, cool camera work, and the cinematography in general was great from top to bottom. Sophia Thatcher, I would say, is the standout doing a wonderful job as this teen reeling from the loss of her mother she captures the grief and emotionally detached nature of sadie quite well the chemistry between her and uh between her and, and blair is enough to make their sister sibling dynamic believable from a technical perspective the boogeyman is hitting all the right marks it's very suspenseful it's well acted paced just right great use of the dark or shadows i guess i should say but i can see most people by the end of it all going nah because it's just not anything overly fresh when it comes to movies like this but it's all for the most part done in a decent enough fashion that fans of the horror genre like myself will enjoy it will want to revisit it and it might become a yearly watch for some of you i had a lot of fun with the boogeyman i do just wish that they kind of dug a little deeper into those themes they were kind of addressing Maybe there was something with grief that I was overlooking in relation to how it tied into the monster because the themes in general from the short story itself, I saw them present here in the movie, but I felt as though it was trying to do a lot more, but didn't know how to do it when it comes to how this monster relates to their grief, or maybe I misunderstood it at times, but you guys can let me know what you think about the boogeyman when you get to see it down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future i would give the boogeyman a six and a half out of ten and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video